Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Fullmoon Adventure Club. And today we're gonna to be talking about waking up lithium batteries or lithium iron phosphate batteries that have gone into a protection mode. Um, so let's just get right into it here. Uh, what a BMS is or a battery management system is a computer chip or series of computer chips, little circuit board that's gonna shut down power to the positive and negative terminals or output of the battery, um, kind of disconnecting them from the internal cells if they become overcharged or undercharged. So when the power gets too low, it says, hey, we shouldn't go any lower than that. It'll damage the cells and it disconnects the power pack from the terminals of the battery. And the same goes for it being overcharged. When it gets too full and the charger's still trying to pump juice in there, maybe you have your settings wrong, that BMS system will say, hey, we're getting too overcharged. Let's disconnect the battery terminals from the cell packs inside to prevent damage. And when it does that, it goes into a protection mode or sleep mode, um, some will call it and what you have to do, that battery's gonna have zero uh, voltage whenever you check it with a multimeter from there on out until it wakes back up. And so if you're getting zero volts on your battery and you can't charge it because your charger is not reading that it's connected to a battery, it doesn't say low voltage, it's not getting 10 volts or anything else, it's getting zero, so it thinks it's not even connected. So your charger can't charge the battery on its own unless it has a wake up, you know, function it built into the charger, which a lot don't. So what you need to do to wake those up, and I'll just tell you straight up, the way you do this is you basically take another battery, you hook the positive of the good battery to the positive of your sleeping battery, the negative terminal of your good battery to the negative terminal of your sleeping battery, and that connects them just like you'd be jump starting a battery. And that voltage tells the battery management system, hey, they wanna charge us or use us or whatever, and we need to wake back up. Um, and so that's the way you do it you can leave them connected for a few seconds or you can even reconnect and tap them a couple times just to make sure that you're getting little signals of voltage to the battery management system to wake that battery up and usually that will do it on batteries that actually have a power button like lion energy or my big battery uh, batteries they have a power button so you can turn them off and that but that button also functions as a wake up signal to the battery that turns it back on when you when you hit the power button which i absolutely love I, it's really one of my favorite features because i hate trying to wake up these batteries um but that's how you do it that's the meat and potatoes of the procedure is you just hook up another battery or 12 volt source and wake up the battery and then it resumes normal operation now Today was gonna to be a negative review on a battery that I received a while back from Golden Mate. It's a 200 amp hour battery. And I put it in the RV for about five months. And for whatever reason, you know, we had some power interruption issues, you know, it was supposed to be charged and float, uh, maintained so that it just stayed full in the RV uh, throughout the winter. And um, I went out there to try and use it. It was dead, I was getting no voltage. And so I, uh, tried to connect a battery charger. It said it was reading no volts. Um, I started the RV, which actually sends voltage from the alternator to the back battery to charge it. And that even woke up the Xantrax charger. It said, yeah, I see the battery. Let's charge it. It was unable to, it just, no matter what I did, this battery was just staying asleep. It was giving me no voltage, no nothing. Um, and I thought those three things should have woken it up, of course, but I never pulled it out. Um, and I never disconnected the, the uh, power leads going to the RV. So when I did finally say, well, obviously something's wrong with this battery, let's pull it out. I noticed that the top seemed to have a very noticeable bow to it, like it was swollen. And I was like, oh man, maybe something went wrong. The battery management system didn't catch it and it overcharged and now it's swollen and I'm so glad it didn't start a fire or something. And so that's unacceptable um, to me if that's the case. And I'm gonna do a video to warn you guys about this uh, battery that I previously said seemed pretty good. And um, so, I'm gonna cut that battery open and we're gonna dive into it. Um, but before I do, um, I just kinda wanna just throw it out there. I was able to wake this battery up and it was fine. Um, and it was not swollen because of anything wrong inside the battery, it was just the plastic lid was kinda bowed. And so that's a spoiler alert, but I wanted to show you guys the pain in the butt I went through to try and figure out what was wrong with this battery so I could tell you guys. When it turns out it just, 
didn't wake up properly. And in the end, I was able to do that. And I'll show you exactly the method that I used to do that after I had already gotten into this battery. Now, as far as taking these batteries apart, I do not recommend that anybody do that. They are very, 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 very sealed. You cannot get into them with screwdrivers and all kinds of stuff. In most cases, they are glued with an epoxy, sealed completely. And um, I had to cut around this battery to get the top off. And I never recommend anybody do that because if you're using a saw and you hit a wire or you hit a cell or you connect a circuit, you've got a huge fire on your hands, a huge fire hazard and stuff like that. So I wouldn't recommend that anybody do this ever. That being said, let's open this thing up with a saw and see what's going on in there. So as you can see here, we have zero voltage on the voltmeter and then the charger when we hook that up um, also says zero volts. And so it did not start charging because it did not think that it was connected to the battery. Here you can see it just says zero, zero, zero voltage. And so it's not putting any current into the battery. Now this particular charger does have a feature where you can turn it to supply mode and it will just put out uh, current regardless of whether or not it detects the battery. So I did that, which put out about 14 volts at about two amps. And so here you can see now we have voltage at both terminals, 14 volts. And that I thought should have woken up this battery. However, when I took the, uh, the charger turned out of that mode, it still read zero volts. And that plus being hooked up in the RV when I started the RV engine and had the alternator run to it, I really thought there was something wrong with this battery because I also noticed this bulge on the top lid. Using this old rusty saw I had outside, you can see the level of bulge on the top and it felt pretty pretty hard to get into. So um, I thought for sure something had gone wrong with this battery and proceeded to open it up with this Sawzaw, being very careful not to go too deep into the battery casing and just staying just enough to get through the outer layer of plastic because I tried everything else to try and pry this lid away from the battery and had zero luck. And so we just had to cut it open. I do not recommend anybody try that. But after about 20 minutes of uh, being really careful and not going too deep on the battery, I was finally able to get the top off. And this is what we're gonna have once we look inside. So I started prodding around with my voltage meter and um, we did have voltage on one side of the BMS at 6.22 volts, but the side of the BMS that goes to the terminal was completely dormant, no voltage whatsoever on any of the terminals that I could find. Um, I then checked the cells underneath, gave myself a little more room and was just kind of looking for any uh, sign of wires that were disconnected or anything like that. I couldn't find any of that. It looked pretty well put together. Everything was really secured into place. Um, those are really high grade silicone wires you use for a high output RC applications and stuff like that. So you put enough of them together, they're more than capable of handling it, that. But everything looked like it was really tight. So I took the uh, heat sink off the battery management system and checked every single connection that I could think of for continuity, looking for any damage to circuits, um, any kind of burned out leads, anything like that. Not, everything some, seemed fine. So I took this line energy battery, this little guy, it puts out 14 volts, and I just connected it straight to the battery terminal, which I had not tried yet. I, I thought the other mef methods that I'd used should have worked, but I used these cables and I just touched it for a couple of seconds and then reconnected, reconnected. So I did this several times and I'm not sure if maybe there was a certain number of times I'm supposed to do it to wake up the battery management system. Maybe it's three times or something, I don't know. But after doing this about five or six times, what I noticed was that now all of a sudden, boom, it was awake. We were at 10.50 volts. And so I'm gonna throw a charger on it and see what's going on because it appears that it has woken up. So now when I put on the same charger, you'll notice that, hey, it notices there's a battery there at 10.6 volts or whatever, and it starts charging the battery. So we have successfully woken it up and I didn't have to open this thing up at all apparently apparently if I had done whatever correctly to actually wake it up with voltage. So I hot glued the lid back together and then ran some electrical tape around it just to seal it back up. And I'm gonna go ahead and charge that completely and we'll see how she does. Okay, so just for fun, I just threw on an inverter with some jumper cables real quick to make sure that we're still getting like output out of this guy and a heat gun. So you do have power. And there we go. So she is working. 
So there you go, guys. And even though this battery um, turned out to be fine, the BMS did work. It did put it into a sleep mode. It was not swollen, nothing like that. Um, the battery's okay and it, it can still be used. I'm gonna put this back into service with some solar projects here at the house and I'll let you know if anything ever goes awry with it. I would recommend that they add some cross stitching to their lid to make it more sturdy so that the foam doesn't make it bow up just because that makes people nervous like me. And um, also, it's strange that it was that difficult to wake up, but it might have been the multiple taps. I don't know. Maybe if uh, I maybe I missed something in the directions about waking it up, but it might have been three signals, you know, lets it know to, hey, wake back up. I'm not sure. But that's another reason that I really enjoy batteries with a power button on them or a, a power meter level button on them because that usually functions as a wake up button as well. And that's so much easier to just push a button and have your vehicle come on and start charging than it is to bring a, another battery up there and hook up jumper cables and, and try and get it to wake up that way. But the battery was okay. And I hope that helps you guys out because I went through a lot of trouble thinking this battery was completely uh, gone when it turns out I, I just went through the incorrect procedures to wake it up apparently. So there you go. I hope that's helpful. I would never recommend opening these guys up. That could be very dangerous for you guys. And um, yeah, I think that's about it. So if that helped you out, please like, share, subscribe. That really helps me out. And until the next video, guys, thanks so much for watching and happy camping.